Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to the AMD Threadripper 3960X deleting and also hopefully if it works out direct die video. Um, in one of my last videos we were talking about the 3960X retail CPU, the one I bought and the reason because I or the reason why I bought a 3960X 24 core and not a 32 core was mainly the price because I was going to do deleting and also if it works out a direct die. The potential of damaging the CPU I think is high that's why I went for the 24 core so if something goes wrong we only wasted about 1500 euro which is still quite a lot. On my table we currently have the Strix TRX40 eGaming um, which we're going to use in today's test in combination with the water cool heat killer um, CPU cooler that's already mounted on the CPU. Everything is stock at the moment. Thermal paste is Cryonaut Extreme. We will test this bundle quickly, set it up um, just to get some reference values, maybe like Cinebench and see what the temperature looks like stock. Um, temperature measurement will be kind of a challenge mainly because we have so many different dyes on the CPU and I'm not really sure at which location they are tracking the temperature and how this will be affected from direct dye. Could be that for example direct dye three dyes have pretty good contact, temperatures are lower and one has bad contact and then temperatures are red higher. I have no idea. We will see how it works out but let's first uh, assemble the system and get some reference values. Setup is pretty much assembled so far. This is ready to go. We have a 360 um, custom water cooling in the back with an EK Palm Reservoir combination on here. We're going to use those quick connect fittings. Um, by the way, those are from Bits Power because in one of my previous videos a lot of people asked what kind of uh, fittings I was using. I think it was in the Astrock X570 video. Just put them on the block. Oops. Looks like there was still a little bit of water inside. All right, obviously it didn't fit because both fittings are too wide, diameter too big. That's why it didn't fit. So I had to add this extension. It's not beautiful, but it will work. As you can see, the 3960X is now overclocked to 4.3 GHz across all cores, which you can see here. Um, running about 1.4 V-core, so that's a pretty heavy OC for 3960X across all cores. And yeah, really much power consumption as you could see in my previous review. We're now going to perform a Cinebench R20 run for our reference to get some uh, temperature reference values for comparison reasons afterwards. Um, in case the CPU survives the deleting, uh, we can see the temperature ramps up quite quickly. Um, in the German version we just had a peak temperature of 85.1 degree Celsius. Now we can see it's um, 86 so it's yeah, 86.5. So it's about 1.5 degree more than in the German one, which is kind of obvious because we just um, did this as the second run and therefore the water temperatures may be slightly higher. Uh, but we will stick to the reference number from the German video because it was the original run with uh, 85 degrees Celsius. That's going to be our reference. Next step is deleting and uh, for this we will first cut with the razor blade around the IHS simply to loosen the glue between IHS and PCB will make deleting in the end a little bit easier. We're going to use this self-made delete diamate which we built for I think it was like Epic or the first generation Threadripper but physically it's still the same CPU so it still fits. We will put the CPU on here and put it inside the oven at like 160, 170 degrees Celsius simply to make sure that the indium solder uh, between the PCB or the chips and uh, the IHS is getting soft and is melting will make the lidding much easier especially um, once the glue is also removed or the connection of the glue is removed between um, IHS and PCB. Now putting the CPU inside the deliter, we will put this whole thing into the oven for like 20 minutes. Luckily for you it will be only 10 seconds. 
while we are waiting for the CPU to be ready for the lidding, we're going to take a quick look at uh, the cooler and also at the mainboard because this is also very um, yeah, crucial part I think when it comes to uh, direct dye. First of all we had to pick a cooler that is really flat on the bottom. That's why I picked the water cool heat killer. It's really really flat. None of the screws are sending out. We also have quite big holes right here which are not colliding with the mounting holes on the socket. And the socket is also a part that's going to be yeah, quite problematic. We will have to remove both of those frames and not only the frames but also the whole mechanism that's sitting on the bottom because all of this um, is too high. The CPU or the cores themselves will not sit much higher than the um, plastic frame here on the corner. So everything that's really higher than this will collide with the CPU cooler and that's going to be a problem. That's why we'll have to completely remove this somehow. First step, remove those four screws on the corner of the socket and remove this frame. The ILM looks to be welded together, like on this point and this point looks like it's welded. I think we're going to try to remove the springs first and then um, try to get rid of those bolts inside here, kind of remove those frames somehow. Figured out there is some, I have no clue how this is called in English really, but it's securing the bolt inside the spring and the frame, removed both of them on both sides. Now I can remove this part right here. So far so good, unfortunately yeah, this part is still welded, means that we have to remove those with a Dremel because you can see if we put the water cooler on here, this is going to collide. Frame is ready to go, it's not beautiful here but yeah it will work. I don't even know in general if it's going to work because the mounting pressure which we will need to push the CPU into the socket is really insane and using that, this without ILM, not sure if it's going to work in general, so quick and dirty. Yeah, the lidding seems really simple. On the first push the IHS already moved. Yeah, it looks really good. You can see it's still warm and indium solder is still soft. You can see this very massive um, I.O. die in the middle and then four individual dies on the corner with eight cores each, so 32 cores in total. Now quickly cleaning the CPU from the indium solder residues. Pretty impressive CPU, I really have to admit that. Just looking at this, you can see the IOTA in the center, surrounded by the four um, chips that contain the cores. And yeah, if we compare it to the 3990X that's coming out sooner or later, I'm not sure when it will come out. Um, I think we saw some pictures that were released by AMD quite a while ago and yeah, this one is missing the four additional chips. I hope you can see it in the camera. If you look at this area and this area next to the chips, it looks like those areas were prepared for additional chips in future. Obviously, it could be that the base design of this CPU is the same as for the 64 core and therefore we can see kind of prepared solder pads underneath. For the first test, we will just use conventional thermal paste, quickly putting the CPU inside the socket. The thing is, if we put the water cooler on here, we will only have pressure in the center and it's very likely that even though this PCB is really thick, that the pressure on especially like the corners will not be enough for the system to have yeah, proper contact, especially with all the dim slots and everything. Could be that the bad contact leads to that the system will not power on. That's why we'll just use some conventional thermal paste quickly and see if it powers on. System is set up, ready to go. 
pretty much minimal configuration. We have one VGA, we have one memory stick, nothing else, one NVMe drive that was already sitting on the board. Yeah, postcode LED is already showing some code, so that's quite promising. Let's see if this uh, thing is going to boot up. We're in BIOS. Um, I'm really surprised. It's 44 degrees Celsius on the CPU core, which is fine, 4.3 gigahertz, 1.4 volts, so that's totally fine regarding that we have only conventional thermal paste. It's only one DIMM, which I think should be fine. I will reassemble everything with liquid metal and putting in four memory sticks and we will try to get to Windows. Because Roman doesn't know how to apply thermal paste, I will take over. Looks good, the CPU goes back into the socket, including the four dims, mounting the water block again and let's see how the temperatures will be. Unfortunately so far not that great. Everything is working fine, I mean all the dims are there and the CPU is working fine, so mounting pressure wise seems okay. Unfortunately you can see I'm running Cinebench R15 and only single threaded load. And already there I have a peak temperature of like 90 to 92 degrees Celsius, which is 7 degrees more than before and we're running only one thread instead of 48 threads. Yeah, not that great. I think I will just mount the CPU again, maybe add a little bit more liquid metal, which is usually not that great because if it's too much it's like squeezing out on the side, but we will just remount and see if it helps. Okay, attempt number three already. I just remounted three times. The first time I had zero zero on debug LED. I was like, uh oh, did I kill the CPU? Second time I had like memory issues. So one of the memory dims was not cor um, detected correctly, which is typically an indicator that the mounting pressure is not there. Remounted the third time. Everything was booting fine. We're now in Windows by yeah, mounting three times. You can see I already passed Cinebench R20 once. Temperature is now going to like 83, 84, 85, yeah, towards 86, which is pretty much the same what we had stock. And I think this is related to the fact that we have not enough mounting pressure, which is also probably also why we had those boot issues like zero zero and memory detection problems. Yeah, so we will work on mounting pressure, but that would be too much for this video. I have to go to a workshop and modify the cooler probably. I already have an idea in mind how to work on this and how to improve it, but yeah. I think we're getting there. It's quite cool that we can, in theory, do direct eye on Ryzen 3000 Threadripper, which is something we couldn't do on the previous one and also not on the typical um, Ryzen like 3950X, so that's something really cool we can do, but I think we ha still have to work on this and maybe increase mounting pressure and test again. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.